One of my absolute favorite books when I was young is about a couple of kids that get locked into the library overnight and they kind of read their way through the evening. And that made such an impact on me. I was so jealous. Like I have been a reader since the time I'm very young. And I grew up uh, with an English teacher mama who used to give my sister and I reading lists that were far more robust than the ones we would come home with from school. So I am a lifelong and avid reader. And today I wanna to share five books and one runner up of books that, not necessarily my favorite books of all time, but books have, that have had a tremendous impact on me. Welcome to Body of Truth. I am Rebecca Windsor. Body of Truth was born uh, after years of suppressing my own intuition and inner voice and really kind of living within a tomb that I created for myself. Um, everything in my life changed at once. My marriage exploded. My son left for college and I was left having to rebuild from scratch. And I knew that I didn't want to go on living the same way that I had. So I needed to make some really fundamental changes. And in order to do that, um, I needed to do a couple of things. First of all, I needed to allow the voice of my intuition to be heard. I needed to quiet down. I needed to decide what was really important to me and what I wanted to bring through in my life. And the most important lesson that I learned to make these things come true is that I needed to bring them up and through my physical body, like a muscle memory of repeating a physical motion again and again, to truly bring these things into fruition and into my life. I hope to suggest that you should listen to your own intuition and maybe start an inquiry, a self-inquiry of your own. So I, these are in no particular order, um, but I just wanted to share them with you. And obviously I get no sort of like affiliate anything, but they just have had a huge impact on me. Um, the first one I have mentioned a couple of times already in other videos that I can link below is The Four Agreements. It's very sunny here today. So The Four Agreements is um, a very simple, written like a parable, very easy to read. And it's fantastic for foundational mindset shifting. So it kind of like allows you to unplug from the stories that you keep telling yourself and giving yourself like kind of a new frame to start with. And it also, because the agreements are so simple, um, it allows you to kind of call them up and, and bring them into your day throughout your day. It's not a difficult practice to start your day or end your day with these four agreements. So that is number one. Um, I also went with the sexy librarian aesthetic to match the um, the whole thing today. Um, number two, this is this is definitely part of the collection of books that is my Bible. This is Finding God Through Sex by David Data. Um, this book fundamentally changed my relationship with God and let me understand and embrace the idea of bringing God into the bedroom with myself solo and with my partner. It it made me understand that this title that I had given myself of sex nun that I thought was perverse was actually prayer and absolutely a, um, a form of prayer to God. And again, bringing God into the bed with me and creating an intimate relationship with God. And to me, God is neither man nor woman. It's, it's my creator. But being able to become one with my creator shifted everything for me. Shifted everything with my sexuality. Shifted everything with my being and my relationship. So that is one that I offer you to try. And what's really cool about the way he structured the chapters is... Half is for him, half is for her, which is which is whether or not you are heterosexual, it's just very interesting because it, it plays with the polarity of masculine and feminine. And no matter what your sexuality is, we all have those elements inside us. So I think it's a groundbreaking book. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, definitely, if you've been in a couple a long time, it, it's just such an interesting perspective. And it's a way where you can understand, you can really bring the sacredness into sex. That's number two. Number three is a collection of essays that I stumbled on called For the Love of God. And it's essays on per the people that like 
collaborated with it, um, contributed to it, all wrote a, an essay on the personal nature of their relationship with God. There's an essay from the Dalai Lama, um, uh, uh, Mother Teresa. So it, it's so, uh, Buddhist monks. It's so interesting to hear the different perspectives. And it also, again, like um, introducing God into my sex life, this also provided a door to really deepen my relationship with my creator um, and the essence of God, who, who is very extremely, extremely important in my life. So that is another one that I just found. I mean, some of the essays are written in just, they're just almost written in a poetic tone and they're gorgeous. So that's another one. Um, this one is a little bit more of a practical guide, but no less important. The New Toughness Training for Sport. Now, I discovered that the same author, James Lohr, um, also wrote one just for life. But, I mean, life is a sport. You can, you can apply the techniques here for sport to any part of your life. Now, the idea behind this book is how do you perform in clutch situations? He's a tennis pro by, by profession and then also got into biofeedback for athletes of all kinds. But what's so interesting about this is when you need to turn it on, how do you not suppress but bring in your emotion, bring in all of the parts of you, including your physical conditioning, to absolutely nail it when you need to turn it on. Or when you need to turn it on after you face a setback. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it is, for me, for day-to-day, -day, for practical mindset, and, and we all have elements of performance in our life, if I'm feeling like I'm not up for it, this offers absolutely practical advice to reset and get back back in the game and you know again I feel like the sports metaphor is fantastic because everything's sports more or less um this book Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza uh I have read all of his books and I get something different every time I read them any one of his books is fantastic to start with um the reason that this one is so important to me and made such an impact on me is he looks at exactly the same philosophy that I completely ascribe to is you can change your physical reality through repetition and, and in his case, meditation and literally changing your brain waves. I come through it for a more holistic body approach. I think that, honestly, rhythmic physical movement can, can also inspire these changes. But the way he goes about it is he actually measures people's brains before and after these specific meditations, and you can see the changes. So he talks about how people have made miraculous health recoveries, how people have like brought abundance into their life and completely shifted everything about their lives through completely reprogramming themselves, which is what we're after. We're, uh, we're all we want, all we, I would hope that all we all want to do is enter a new place of freedom where none of our old holds and our old limitations enter our new lives. And this is absolutely a guide to book to do that through your brain. Um, and it is fantastic. And again, anything he does from any short YouTube clip, any meditation, uh, he's he's just fantastic and groundbreaking. Um, and the last, I have one runner up that the only reason it's not in this list is because I'm not done with it yet. I just got it the other day. But again, I'm, you know I'm all about practical advice. I, I'm not a woo-woo on the mountain kind of a girl. So this book is called Limitless. It's by Jim Quick. And it was recommended to be, me by a, a very close friend of mine who's production and her work ethic I so appreciate so if it's something that she was into I was like I gotta check it out so in this short time I'm like not even a third through I have already learned things about it because it's basically taking off the limits of how you learn Right. So so you want to take the limits off your emotional games you play with yourself and the limitations you've learned since you're young. So he goes about that exact same thing. But he also talks about the approach of how you actually learn new information, how you retain it better, how you ground it into your body. Like it's it's everything that I ascribe to believe in. And he gives you a lot of hacks and shortcuts, holistic hacks and shortcuts, because I don't totally ascribe to hacks. I think that rigor is very important. But um, I think that, first of all, the reading through it like is a breeze. But even he says, he suggests that you read it in 20-minute pieces, because if you read for 20 minutes and then stop, 
you can um, retain more of the information. So it's like I use the Pomodoro technique, which is what that is for writing, right? I'll write in a concentrated space for 20 minutes. Then I take a five minute break and then I resume. And he just says the same thing for reading to really retain the information you read. And I never thought about that because I'll like just read and read and read and probably until I'm fatigued. And then he said, you'll remember the beginning and you'll remember the end, You but you might not extract the information from the middle. That's already a game changer right there for me. So I totally recommend that too. I hope you enjoyed this. This was so fun for me. I mean, who doesn't love like a good like top five or top 10 list? And if you found this entertaining or interesting, please subscribe. You can click the bell for notifications when I upload. Uh, click the link and subscribe because I've got some very cool things coming very soon. I upload every day and I will see you tomorrow.